Bam, bam, ba, down. Theme song. Tommy Tubbins has given birth to a brand newborn. We welcome a new newborn who will not know its grandmother because we ate her in the previous one. <laughs> but hey, life moves on and the circle continues and here we are back in Stranded Alien Dawn with uh, this elfin, a large male. So we'll check for male this time and then we'll rename this one. This is, um, this shall be um, uh, Squeams. Okay, so that's Squeams. <laughs> <laughs> Squeams the elfin, uh, and I. In the last episode, we had to get rid of Deborah to, to to make it through the winter. I really do feel like it was a, the good decision, and I just wanted to like have a, like a, an open dialogue with you guys about, you know, the actions we took in the last episode. And really, what it comes down to is, uh, we needed to survive. I didn't want to get rid of Sven uh, because. I looked at Tommy Tubbins. Tommy Tubbins was the one who was pregnant and has given birth to Squeams because Tommy was a large female. I didn't know that part. So I figured, okay, well, we have a female. We need to keep a male-female split of two adult uh, options there. So so Deborah was the odd one out, unfortunately, and we chose to get rid of Deborah. I feel like I made the right call. I told you guys to look away. If you didn't like it, I apologized. You know, for what we had to do to get through. But again, that is kind of why we have these um, Ulfin. That's kind of the whole point of them. Uh, one thing that was pointed out to me, thank you, Pixie76. You got to research the poops. So I haven't been researching it. So we're going to set up an observe task for that and, and get that done. Um, and in the meantime, we need to get a whole lot more done. So I've got some uh, a, a row of furnaces making bricks. We're pretty close to having the final bricks we need to uh, finish this length, at least here. Which, yeah, should give us a relative amount of safety from this approach here. This brick here is mostly, looks like, pretty finished uh, as well. So we can kind of keep walling this area off. And then we can really start setting in on making this structure a little more permanent and a little more... I don't know, uh, scary for the bugs. Do I have flamethrowers yet? No, I haven't even researched flamethrowers. I think what we need to do is like switch over our research tasks. Hay sausages, then the long distance travel, all useful, all useful. Um, where is it? Do I not have it? Automated turrets. Find and produce CPU cores. Oh, flamethrowers. So we can get some flammenwerfers going pretty soon here. But yeah, we just need to find some CPU cores before we can get some automated turrets. I think once we get to automated turrets, that's really, you know, where things start to get a lot easier in our lives. And then I think you transition from your your early to your mid game, at least. Maybe even your late game. But I think the big goal for today should probably be getting the back of this built out. As well as some power, you know, generation. Maybe we put, oh man, what's the plan here? Put some power cells underneath, under here. I do, I I was warned in the last, before the last playthrough that they, power cells needed to be inside so that they didn't get uh, the weather destroying them. And I feel like that may bore, that may have bore some truth uh, because we did, I did find I was repairing them a lot less in my second, you know, quote unquote season of this episode of this game. Uh, so maybe we got to do that. We're going to put them inside. So I didn't really think about where to put them. I think this shelving... What did I set it for? Crafting materials, other items, medicines. Yeah, maybe we just deconstruct this. Let's deconstruct it. It's sitting here. It's not being used. We have all this shelving here. So let's deconstruct this so it can be ready for some batteries. And then think about uh, where I want to put my solar panels. We need to find some electronics for that, which, thanks to our uh, last episode's uh, berserkness, destroyed. They just disappeared from existence, which was a real bummer. So I need to find some electronics uh, and maybe find a good spot to place these. Then we can get our um, our freezers going on, which I believe we've researched here. Storage. Fridges. Okay, so we don't have freezers researched yet. I would like to do so. Let's go freezers. Let's get rid of bug. Let's do this one next. Fuel fermentation. There we go. I feel like this is a good uh, spread of items. Seems like Simon's off to go and research. Okay, that's good. We're in the middle of a severe heat wave. 34, 32 indoors. Uh, but we have a lot of our plans kind of working for us. 22 left to finish that. The handling on that is going well. We've got 165 hay. So I'm going to start I'm going to start with the back section here and say like let's build this. How much is that going to cost me? Uh, might have to just like select it like this, just so we can figure out how much it's going to cost us. I painfully, desperately want this to be ready 
uh, before our winter sets in. And honestly, like, I kind of thought, ah, we're like, I, 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 I relaxed for a little bit. And then the more I think about it, the more I'm like, no, man, we're like, it's going to happen. We got to go. So let's get all this built here. There we are, 72. So we need 72. The, oh, whoops. Copy. Ah, crap. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. Okay, construct that. Construct that. There we are. All right, so we already need some more brick, but that's okay. We have the resources for it. I just want to get this uh, this part built and focused on first. And then maybe we just build these edges here so we can start building the roof. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Let's do that. So let's go. We're going to go here. We're going to build the floor along here. I think I'm selecting this right. I, I think I may have selected a wall in there as well. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to get some stuff built here. I actually might have to build this whole front piece of wall, which I think is wood. So that's actually not that bad. So let's get that going here. Then that means we can start to request the construction of the roofing. Uh, I think. I have no idea. All right, so now what's the damage? Let's take a look here. We need 255 bricks. Not ideal. Not ideal, but let's get to it. Uh, and here we are. The worst thing I wanted to have happen. Nine aggressive flying animals have spawned across the way from us, so they're probably going to head straight over to here. What we may want to do is make our defense here, maybe, I think. I don't know if they land. Do they hit the traps? I'm not sure. We might want to make our defense here so that we can go inside and buy ourselves some time. These guys have sort of an acid spit, I think, uh, that can cause a lot of issues. But they're very weak, which is very nice. So we're going to let them eat these buttermelons and think about what we're doing with our lives here. What do we have for... Do we have any weaponry? We have two bows, so let's get these people armed with some uh, ranged st stuff, which is great timing on that, so I'm glad we have that. And we have that, you know, cyber spear or whatever for the future, so that'll be good as well. Not looking forward to this attack. About to rot away. Nine of our meals are about to rot away. Yeah, we really want... I really want freezers, and I want this built out pretty quick. Actually, they got to it really fast, which is nice. Let's get this door up here, construct that. And let's start moving our... We could start moving our cooking in there. I think we want to keep going with this one and, and then change over to an electric stove. Uh, storage. Fridge. How big is a fridge? Three. And it's blocking... Oh, it's blocking those windows. We're not going to be able to move the, that until there. Okay. Uh, that's all right. So we're going to have like a shelf here. We could go with the fridge, I guess. But we don't even have our like whole electrical sort of grid up. So we might as well just start building that first. Um, five electronics. Crap. How am I going to find these electronics? Let's go with, uh, how do I, which, like, which way do I want this to look? I think this way. I think to me, that's the front. Okay. So we're going to build two of these of which, for which we need 10 electronics. Let's get some more scavenging going on. I know that they're going to, those bugs are going to attack before they get up, before they go on their morning scavenge. So I'm not worried about adding those orders in. And, uh, well, everybody, wish us luck. Oh, never mind. The attack begins now. No luck needed. So let's, uh, basically head outside in the middle of this nasty heat wave, which has been going for days upon days now. 28 isn't too bad, though. Okay, they're already starting to wreck our roof. We don't want them to do that, so we want them to kind of come to us here. There we are. Okay, the pulse rifle is definitely doing some help here. It doesn't look like I have too much to worry about. I thought this was going to be a major issue, but I think it's in the later game when then like, you know, when there's like 70 of these that attack, that's going to cause problems. Because you can see even with the nine that attacked us, there's still a little bit of danger here, a little bit of damage and something that we're going to need to deal with pretty quickly, probably. Let's take a look. Acid spit. So what do they need? Treatment doesn't require medicines. Well, never mind. <laughs> All right. Yeah, screw these things. I'm going back to bed. For the time being, I'm also going to, in this build, I'm going to cancel uh, this table and chair combo here. And I'm going to move the workbench uh, into this area once we have it built, of course. Because what I'd like to do is, like, all the resources are here. So I'd like them to be building, doing workshop stuff in relative warmth. And they can sleep over here in the cabin. Again, I know it's not ideal, but uh, it is what it is for now. This is our design. We're going with camp si uh, style, so things are kind of spread out everywhere. Bit of a glitch going on. Don't know what that was about. Um, so we have cement floor. I think we can probably like double click. 34 floor constructions. Construct. Let's build them all. All right. We're building all the floors now. Let's do it. 
The heat wave is over and Kana tailors... Tails? She tails through the night. Toils? I don't know. She's trying to make sneakers. That's what I'm saying. I want to get on top of my sneakers, then my t-shirts. I'm going to keep kind of microing this and then start getting some uh, jackets ready for the winter so we have a higher chance of surviving this. And another heat wave sets in because the randomness of this moon cannot be tamed and it will not stop until my colonists are baked or frozen. Great. Heat stroke issues and all kinds of issues just keep stacking up as it is a blistering 41 degrees indoors, 39 outdoors. I, I just, I simply have nothing for them to do. I can't get his, uh, his temperature down. Maybe I could piercing energy, heat tolerance decrease. So I could get him to get rid of this. Let's get him to take that off. Oh no, wait, that was Simon. That's not who I wanted. Okay, maybe Ken who's got, uh, no, no, it was Simon with the life-threatening heat stroke. Okay, so maybe keeping him inside was not a good idea. We needed to keep him out here. The heat stroke is bad everywhere. Uh, we need to get, yeah, we need to get some power up and running. We need to find some electronics as soon as we can so that we can keep these people safe because, yeah, this is getting really bad. I don't have another way to cool them down. There needs to be, like, a low, a low impact or, like, a low-tech version of cooling people down. I'm not really sure. We don't have a fans or something, which is, I know, something that you guys have, have said to use before. We've got our windows open. It's dropping to 38. Maybe that'll be enough to save them. We're going to find out. Kana continues to cry, even though I had her just making shirts a little while ago. Surely, surely you could finish a couple of shirts, maybe? While you cry, I guess? Must be an awful sight to open that door and see Kana just bawling. Oh, boy. This is one of our more challenging runs, to be sure. But they're still alive. They're a little bit fed. We are making progress. So we got to keep going. Hoping this will be done by the winter. Thanks, Kana, for your hard work. I know you guys have some heat stroke. We're working on it. I am going to uh, move this over to our new sort of construction area, our sort of new work area. Uh, maybe we'll just put it here. I think I want to make a second wooden workbench as well uh, because I need them to stay on top of like health stuff as well as the things they're building. And then maybe we could also think about... Uh, no, we'll keep the tailor bench here. Ah, CPU cores. Excellent. Okay, good research. Or a good find, rather. So now we should be able to put in the automated turrets into our research as well. Oh my goodness. We, these hay sausages are taking forever. Three days max. I think that's why. 12 hours max. Yeah, so hay sausages is a massive uh, slowdown in our research. It's a massive log jam. But I do think it's going to help us for the winter uh, when we kind of, you know, need to be feeding these people. Whatever. I know I said it was important, but I, I we don't lose the research, so I'm canceling this one so we can move on here. I just want to get to uh, freezers. Then we'll go long distance travel. I wish there was a faster way to move things around. Uh, oh, man. Heat pumping, though, too. Let's go, let's go long distance, then heat pumping, and then get back into the stuff we need. Oh, graphene salt, uh, we need it all, don't we? Actually, you know what we need is the ability to make electronics. So where is that? Nanotubes printing, kind of good. Chemical cloth synthesis. Wait, do I not have it? Do I not have the ability to make electronics? I must be missing something. I feel like that means I've already researched it. So let's put a soldering bench out here where we know there's going to be power. Uh, maybe right in the middle of the room or under these windows. I think we got to get rid of the Stephen Thetford Memorial windows for a second. We will put them back. I will put them back and you can hold me to it in the comments uh, once we get our production building up and running. But for now, we kind of need to more all-purpose buildings to live in. So let's get the soldering bench built even though it'll need electricity. Uh, which we cannot provide it just yet, but we're working on it. Okay, see, now this is the thing I was definitely worried about. I do not want them to attack during a heat wave and have all of them causing problems while we also have some ground troops. Oh, heat wave over. Oh, that is so nice. Let me guess. Another heat wave on the way. <laughs> Why don't we take Kana? We could try to thin out the herd a little bit, but that could be dangerous. We don't want the, them to get injured out there, but I'd love to also thin this herd out. Um... Hugo's harvesting. Let's let's bring Hugo forward. We like Kana for tailoring. Simon's doing some cooking, and Ken is scavenging. So Simon, let's draft you. You can finish cooking. We still have enough meals right now. Man, it just it honestly just the color and the feel. It feels better. I feel less oppressed now that we've got the uh, 
<laughs> the heat wave over. So let's let's do a little bit of herd thinning. Maybe if we can get two or three, that just might make my life a little easier uh, come attack time. But be careful, Hugo and Simon. You aren't our best attackers. You're just the ones doing the least important stuff at the moment. Oh well, Kana's appreciating a scarabay statue, but her her vi her mood is up high enough that I think we can spare her for this little thinning of the herd here. Okay, good, careful. A couple of good arrow shots and a miss, not ideal. Oh, that one's down, good. Yeah, we actually might be able to clean out a lot of these if they're that weak, which is nice. Okay, well that's actually uh, made a bunch of them angry, so Kana, let's, uh, let's, all, let's all fall back here. Ugh, I mean, it's is it great AI? I don't know, I would say probably not, but I really do enjoy the fact that they just bail after only a few attempts at attacking. Okay, not great, let's pull back. Kinda wanna get these. Nope, okay, let's get this one here. Down, good. Get this one. Oh shoot, oh it missed, oh great. Okay, let's get out of here. Yeah, if we can keep aggroing this guy, we could maybe deal with the Scarabay before the attack even happens. Kana, let's pull you back. Ah, you're gonna get attacked for sure. Okay, that was a bit of an attack, but maybe we can blast you and stun lock you. These stun locks are not seeming to work. Oh, they are kind of a bit. There we go. Yeah, keep it stun locked while we injure it. That's good. That's good. Good moves. Okay, yeah. I'm feeling a lot better about this upcoming attack now. Although it is eight, and the uh, initial attack was seven of those things without any ground troops. So, I don't know. Yeah, maybe this could be still spicy. Oh, he's back. He's back. Stun lock him. Stun lock him. We almost got him. There we go. Stun locked again. That's it for the Scarabay, and that's it for the damage this thing was going to cause, so that's nice. Nice that we all have some uh, um, ranged weapons, even if they are pretty bad ones. I yearn for the days of playing on easy, I will say. I would love to go back to that. And with very little opportunity to strike at our people, Kana takes a little bit of uh, damage for which she needs a bandage. We'll get that dealt with. Hugo and Simon take no damage, but basically spend the afternoon increasing their combat readiness abilities, so that feels great. All right, well done. Didn't even touch our defenses, really. Back to work for you. With two workbenches done, I'm gonna set this one up as my medical one, get rid of short bow, spear, so this will be bandages, first aid kits, and healing bomb. Try to maintain, you know, a decent stock of all that stuff, and then in this one, we can get rid of the bandages, first aid kit. Oop, uh, we'll probably put in veggie leather. So let's keep that, and then, yeah, our veggie leather as well. Let's make, like, I don't know, how much of that do we have? We don't have any. Oh, we have 50 skin bark, yeah, so we'll just do, like, five and get some 50 le veggie leather for some coats or something. And this should hopefully help us speed up, especially if we can get a couple people doing crafting. And then uh, keep our medical stuff separate so we can always easily access that. Thanks, Kana, for working into the night. And what a nice night it is. Contrary to what I said earlier, I've actually changed my priorities one more time. So long distance travel first, then the freezers and the heat pumping because, well, we can't find electronics. We have to basically rely on scavenging them, you know, by chance uh, because our initial boost of electronics got destroyed. We really should have, honestly, we should have knocked her out. I thought the electronics would just fall to the floor and not get destroyed. So that's a real bummer. So um, we can't even get these done. We can't even get power fed to this soldering bench to make... Uh, electronics until we find electronics. So we're in sort of a supply block situation right now. Uh, one which I'll remedy, hopefully, with some travel beyond the hills. Sometimes you really have to keep track of them and make sure that they, they try not to do the work, basically, but it's like, well, you the least you guys can do is on your way home from this little area, set these going so we have some bricks in the morning, you know? Sometimes you gotta stay on top of them, but we are making that progress. Oh, ignore that, ignore that. We're working on it. <laughs> Oh, thanks heavens, Ken has scavenged some electronics. We might have to think about how we use those, because right now they're currently probably going to go and get buried in one of these batteries. But would there be a better use for them, like, say, building a solar panel? Uh, and then start to collect some energy that way, during the day at least? Then we can run our soldering bench. How much are these going to cost me? Alic uh, silicon and metal alloys. For one electronic. Man, those are expensive. Electronics are so expensive. Or do we want a battery? Kind of hard to pick what we want first. Let's go with a solar panel and let's put it... 
can I put it? How many can I get next to each other before? So why don't we go like so, so they don't interrupt the bushes. So let's do that one, and let's uh, pause the construction of these two guys, so that we make sure this gets done first by Ken. Uh, that way we at least have some options for power during the day to get that soldering bench up or whatnot if we need it. Okay, there we are. Let's get you to construct a solar panel just so we lock up those resources over there. Okay, that didn't quite lock up the resources I needed. There we go. Bring those around and we have our first solar panel at Camp Elfenbone. Fifteen bugs have decided to use the bright sun of the morning to test our defenses. Again, I don't recommend doing that, but uh, we'll take them on all the same. Hopefully the traps slow this big one down. And I think I might want... Oh, no, they've got it. Okay. I was worried about the big one, but yeah, it looks like they got them dealt with pretty easily. We're down to six. We're down to five now already. Four. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to say that these defenses are impregnable. I'm just glad that right now we aren't being attacked too heavily. Uh, because if we were, that would be a big problem. Now we need some... I think we need some sticks to keep things fueled up and running. So go cut those broadleaf bushes now. Simon... I guess you guys should go eat. But then I'm going to micro some things here. Because we've got a real problem with uh, our research right now. And I know I could change my tasks. But it's just that like Simon has so much to do. He's got to cook. Uh, no, let's get research long distance travel going. He's got a lot to do, a lot on his plate, just like everybody else. But it is hard because I'm looking here and I'm seeing, like, winter is creeping up very fast. And we're close, but nowhere near being ready to take this on. Another 15 bricks at least for the fireplace, but this whole roof has yet to get done. There we are. Thank you. Long distance travels research. So let's go hot air balloon. Whoops, whoops. Cancel. Ah, crap. I hate it when it does that. It despawns the grass just because of my chunky thumbs. I now no longer have grass there. Uh, let's put it here for now, I guess. How much is it going to cost me? Basically nothing. Um, yeah, let's put it here, and we'll move it later because we're not anywhere near building this building yet. So let's get this thing going so we can uh, explore the great beyond maybe and find some more better resources. And I feel like I should send Ken out to do that. He, when he scavenges, brings back more and better amounts of um, alloys. I don't know if the same holds true. Like, does it count as a scavenge if you go off on a mission? I'm not sure. But I actually think, I'm, I'm confident that we can actually go out and do that. Also, I think I just literally saw Hugo. What did he do? Oh, he just put a hundred. Hey, okay, you know what? Animal food. Uh, hay. We don't need the hay going in there because I need the hay to become bricks. Hugo. I mean, I know you love these animals, but they can eat other stuff. Thought hot air balloon is it built? Kind of goes in to work on a jacket. How many has she made so far? Uh, oh, she hasn't even started. This is her first coat that she's almost done. Okay, that's that's going to be good for the winter, though, so that's great. Self-destruct alert. Our very first... Okay, that was our very first mission, so we might as well send somebody off to go do that one. Where is that? Self-destruct alert. Um... All right, well, we're going to supply it with fuel, and then we're going to send somebody out because maybe, just maybe, we'll get something interesting out of it. And so Ken heads off on our first expedition of this very, very insecure colony. We're sending one whole person away. Hopefully this idea and this plan doesn't bite me in the butt. Good luck out there, Ken. The entire area is littered with items from a ship's cargo deck. The place is seemingly calm, dominated by a single sound. The automated voice of a self-destruct system counting towards zero. I have time to get a single object. What should it be? Okay, um, this is tricky. Fuel fermentation, battery optimization, graphene solar panels, or sleep training. Uh, unlock sleep training. Or just whatever, just roll the dice. I feel like sleep training could be good. Uh, these ones, unlock battery optimization could also be good. I'm going to go, oh, that's tricky, actually. <laughs> I might want to go sleep training, and that's mainly because I feel like it drastically lowers their sleep time. I think it's effective. Let's take a look here. Research. Uh, sleep training. Survivors need less sleep time. Oh, see, it doesn't tell me how much less, but, I mean, that's pretty good to know. So we've got that on the way. We have freezers, 14%, then heat pumping, which maybe... Uh, hopefully we can get some freezers up, but maybe we can get he even heat pumping up and running by the time the winter sets in. I, I don't have high hopes for that. We're still desperately just trying to... Wait, hang on, Hugo. 
go, instead of going to sleep, bake some bricks. Uh, we're still desperately trying to get on top of this brick baking situation. I have 107 hay left, which should be enough to get uh, 160 bricks, I think, doing quick in my brain math here. But it also looks like we are moving on now to the roofing pieces. So I do have hopes that this building could be ready to go uh, by the winter. Um... Again, I don't know how big the freezers are. Somebody told me they were two by, which is smaller than the fridge. Uh, I don't think that's the case though. And I would like to get an electric stove going here. Uh, 20 alloys, that's not that bad. So let's get an electric cooking stove in here. And I've got this wooden power pole up. Uh, oh, it's being built right now, which it looks like this was just far enough away that a connection was not able to be made. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna pause this though, just in case this electric cook stove makes the connection happen to the building. Uh, if not, I'm going to need to put this one wooden power pole here so that the cord can go from here to here to into the building. Not sure why we needed that, but we'll get that connected up. So at least we have some ability to cook at least throughout the day. And then once we get batteries up and running, we can shift to that. I think that just makes it faster and better than using the cook stove. I think the electric stove doesn't seem to connect up. So we're going to uh, get Kana constructing this wooden power pole. Looks like we're still getting uh, some good progress on the bricks. There we go. Well, <laughs> see, this is weird to me. A lot of cables going just into this building. Not sure why three of them are going in there. Uh, well, at least this is powered. So we do have some electricity. Um, so we can start making electronics if that's what we need to do. Maybe I'll just craft up. Yeah, I'll order up some electronics. Let's just do two rounds of those. Ken's back. He, let's let him salvage just in case he randomly finds five electronics. That would be amazing. Then we can get these built. Let's order up one of these. Again, I don't know if this is the right way to do this because now we're going to need a power pole in between this just to connect things up. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't seen this be an issue before like that, but uh, I guess it's working now. Power pole here. Yeah, I don't, let's wait until the uh, one battery is finished to see what we actually need. Uh, to attach this to the building. Life is tough out here, but we have clothes finally, and Sven calls is called over by Ken to get some, some little ear scritches. So ultimately, I think, I don't know, I'm just, I'm feeling hopeful. I think there's something here. And I think Ken does too. I switched Ken to uh, working on electronics, and honestly, it took him a day, but he managed to, well, no. It's a new day and Ken's back to assembling. I think for keeping things warm in here during the uh, winter cooking times, obviously we want a heating stove in here if we could afford it, but right now I'm just going to put an air vent in right here. And I think, oh, that's awesome. Look at that sun. Wait, wait, let's get a good view of that. Oh, sick. That'll be great when this is built. Um, but anyway, I think that vent is going to work best. I noticed that the large windows for the Stephen Thetford Memorial serving thing uh, does not work. It, it interacts poorly with the electric cooking stove. However, uh, the smaller one uh, doesn't seem to do that. So we could do another window here, but again, I'm just not sure how well heat transfers through the window. I don't think windows are meant to be used indoors. I think it's kind of like a vent situation. So we're at least going to get this vent built and hopefully these electronics actually happen this time. Come on. Ooh, mushroom croquettes. Very nice. Excellent work, Simon. Thank you for making those. Uh, so once we can get this up and running, yeah, we've got our brick furnace. We, we'll have a vent here. This area should stay relatively warm, even through some of the nastier cold snaps. And then there's now two dedicated spots where there will be enough warmth to make it through. We also have some coats being stored up for the winter. And we have made... I forgot. One single... I thought I would make five. I keep forgetting that that doesn't make enough electronics to really do anything. The wind carried the sound of a loud bang from the distance. What could it be? Well, I don't know. Once Ken's got this final electronic going, maybe we send him on another expedition. I think Kana can take care of the crafting and the, the building for the time being. Nine small spikes-tailed insects and six explosive scarabae decide to spawn into the map. They are just a little too far away for me to justify. Uh, actually, Hugo, let's pull you back. You shouldn't really be doing salvaging anyway. Why don't we have you... Uh, I don't know, can you build that that wall right there? No, you're waiting for other construction. Okay, uh, wait, what are we missing for that? Well, we probably need this floor. Okay, there we are, construct. Uh, Hugo, why don't you come back and do that? Oh, he's transporting. Okay, fine. He's got something else to do other than salvaging. So that's good. We'll get him away from there. 
uh, and prepare to defend ourselves against those bugs. In the meanwhile, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll keep Ken around. Once he's done these electronics, that's good. We can maybe start stocking up this battery, but for now, I think we should maybe not have him go off on an expedition when this potentially spicy attack is about to happen. But here we go, our first battery is up and running. I don't think it's gonna plug in through the building, unfortunately. I think we're probably gonna have to put another little daisy chain of a power line in right here. But let's get that done first. It is not connected to a power source, so let's maybe force this to happen, because I'd love to start packing away some of that power for the uh, for the winter. Oh, I see. Okay, it's gonna give me some. It's gonna give me a little guff here. Can I go like this? Yeah, but that's gonna clip through the roof, so I definitely don't want to do that. I really thought I could get some connections uh, right near. Okay, can I get anything? I, have they changed that? Have they maybe uh, nerfed the ability to daisy chain through things, maybe? Let's see, with the roof up, could I go here and across? And actually, that does connect up quite nicely. And that looks a little dorky. I wish we could bury power lines or something, but it's better than nothing. And we do need it, so sometimes your aesthetics have to take a, you know, a back seat to what you actually need to get done. Oh, and 85 hungry pests show up as well. Wait, who wins scavenging? Hugo still did it. I wasn't paying attention and he went back to go scavenge. Okay, fine. Well, bring that stuff home before you get attacked. Ken, no salvaging. Sorry. Let's get you to build missing resources. Okay. Can we... Okay. It, it, honestly, Ken, just refuel this. We need you guys to stay home and get ready for this attack. Then we need to go and deal with these 85 hungry pests. That is going to be so annoying. Especially coming towards the winter here. They're going to start eating all of this remaining stuff here. In fact, Kana, let's get you... Yeah, let's get those resources there for the next coat. Then I'm going to draft you. We're going to need to draft everybody now anyway. So, uh, Hugo, let's draft you and pull you over there. Ken, what are you going off to do? Some salvaging. Let's draft you and pull you over. Simon, thanks for cooking, but you've got a lot of running to do, so let's get you over there. Kana's now done, so let's draft her and pull her up onto the shooting platform as well. And hopefully we can do that before these bugs come up with another way through. While they're running to their positions, Burn McFluff has commented saying he hasn't been able to playtest it just yet, but he does believe that if you make a double thick row of skin bark trees, right, and then you turn off harvesting, that bugs actually can't get through it and it creates a sort of, um, what would you call it, like a soft barrier, a soft wall that they can't seem to get through. Oh no, 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 no. Ah, oh, crap, 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 crap. Okay, so these guys are busy getting rid of these hungry pests, but unfortunately we need Kana and probably Ken. I don't know, maybe Hugo. We need to go and stop because our the bugs are going to kill all our animals. Although, Tommy Tubbins and Sven, aren't kind, they aren't messing around, to be honest with you. Although, Squeams might not do as well. Okay, careful, though. These are explosive. I need to back you guys away, I think. Split off. Okay, move. Oh, okay, good. I think we dodged that. Okay, crap, crap, crap. Okay, let's go this way. We gotta go save Squeams. Squeams need all the help we can get. Is Squeams down? <gasps> no, Squeams! Squeams, no! I thought you had a bit more time. I thought I had more time. Tommy Tubbins, your little baby's dead. Oh, it's these bad boys. Okay, we need to get back behind the wall. We cannot save our people at this time. Oh, I did not think I was going to lose Squeams that way. We only just got to know him. All right, you guys, get back behind those walls. These things mean business, and uh, we need to stop them. Yeah, put them to the traps. Oh, Squeams, I'm so sorry. This is because I didn't get around to finishing that wall or capping it off through this way. I have failed you. Tommy Tubbins, an enraged mother, chases after what's left of the starving scarabay. Eh? These beings won't make it through, but we're going to have to fight through the night. Oh, Squeams, that's so sad. Well, we're going to butcher Squeams, at least. Hugo's been injured, but it looks like a slight injury. Superficial bite. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that one. We just need to get rid of these animal attacks. And then I think we should spend the night, honestly, unfortunately, dealing with these hungry pests. I've seen comments where people say that they, they go through your turrets. They just eat anything. They'll just destroy everything. And then I think one thing we could do, maybe even leading up to the winter, is like, these are migrating through. So we could probably... Oh, what was that? Animal attack. 
Uh, so we could, what I was going to say is we could probably do something about um, bringing some more Ulfin into the fold, just so that we have a bit more ability to defend ourselves, or they do, I guess, should they get attacked again like that. Hugo holds his head as he walks up to Squeams to go and do the nasty task that he has to do. Would have been nice to have Squeams around for a little bit longer, but it looks like he actually maybe even took a scarabay or whatever, those spike-tailed insects down, so that's kind of nice of him, but... Squeams was not long for this world. We just didn't know it. Really sorry about this, Tommy and Sven. Hopefully you guys can make another one before you get too old. Oh, these bugs are everywhere! They're gonna eat all my stuff! <laughs> Freezers have been researched and so we can place those. Let's take a look here. They are three wide, which was told to- which I did, uh, I did predict. I did- I think I was told maybe they were too wide. It doesn't matter. Anyway. So we're going to get those two in here. Now this, by the way, is just absolutely abysmal to me. Just hate looking at how many cables we have here. So I I just wanted it not to clip through this. But they have definitely, like, look, they have definitely reworked uh, the way that these work. So what I might do is actually move this guy down to, like, yeah, I just might move it over. And we'll get another, I know, I know. And we'll get another solar panel here anyway, so that'll look okay. Um, oh, although, did I just screw up? Yeah, this was probably my chance to be filling this battery. Uh, oh, it is still filling, I guess. Oh, I guess it's going right to this one. So maybe we don't even need this one. Cancel. We could even just deconstruct this one, maybe. Uh, no, I'm not sure if we can. No, yeah, we can, we can. Okay, great, great, great. Deconstruct it. And then this solar panel will connect up to this cable, which will also power the, uh, door. And then we won't have these weird, stupid cables all everywhere. And this thing can slowly charge up. There we go. Unpowered devices. Not connected to a power source. Oh, so no, there is a proximity thing going on here. So this building is now not, not fully powered up. Oh my goodness, that's annoying. Okay, well, it is what it is. So if I want to do this again, what I need to do is like power here. And then another one out here. Oh man, do I ever not want cables on cables everywhere. That is annoying to me. But I need to go, like, there. Oof. Very much not enjoying that. Okay, well, we'll build another one there and try to power this thing up. Although that one looks powered, to be honest. It looks like just this isn't getting connected to a power source. No, they both aren't. Oh, boy. Okay, well, we'll see if this works. With the winter approaching, we are a much more, I'm feeling a much more prepared this time, I think. I'm gonna set down a big ol' harvest order for all of these bush berries because it's cold enough now that they're going to survive. Uh, although I am quite close to building my freezers here, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. I guess they aren't, now that I think about it, they're not that necessary into the winter. We just need a warm place to do the cooking and the prepping. Um, to that end, I may need to put a, for now, just a heating stove into here. Let's put a heating stove right there. Let's order that up. We do need to get some uh, alloys made. So I've got this switched back over to alloys. Uh, whoops. Okay, well, I'll switch it over to alloys after this round of bricks is done. Uh, so we can get on top of our things here. I need a few more alloys so I can make some more electronics. And then we should be able to get our freezers up. Not too worried about that right now. In fact, let's turn those off so that they focus on the heating stove, which needs the alloys first. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Then we can turn this freezer on once we have some electronics. And we should probably turn on the table in that so we have a nice area for them to eat their meals inside. And then of course we could deconstruct this uh, because we don't want them to accidentally eat outside. However, we are looking quite ready to go. We've got some coats on standby, a couple of pairs of shoes. Looking for that fourth coat. I think we might have it over here ordered up in the tailor thing. No, oh, that means somebody's already wearing it. Well, that's fine. That's no major complaints about that. So we got this coat on here, below 31, above minus six. Okay, so that should be good. Once the cold snaps hit though, that will be a problem. It's already, okay, let's close these windows. Starting to get cold again, pretty cold. And we have no windows over here, so we have nothing to worry about in our new cookhouse with the annoying cabling everywhere. Ken puts the finishing touches on the initial build of our cookhouse. We have no windows in it. It is just a brick and half wood building with a nice solid stone foundation in the center, which is probably pretty cold. We'd need to get some flooring down here, but I'm not worried about that right now. What I'm worried about is 
Let's see what's our temperature in here. Zero degrees, not ideal. The fall off is very fast, but we're gonna start to get some uh, heat pumps in here eventually. Let's get this thing refueled and started. Handle brick fireplace. Let's get some warmth in here and start to make this area a place where we can hang out during this long, cold snap filled, I'm sure, winter. I'm placing a few more solar panels within range of this. It's crazy, each one needs a plug now. There's all these just trailing cables on the ground. I need to come up with four electronics to be able to build those. So to do that, I need a fair amount in my battery, which is not filling up because this only generates 20. This thing is now constantly using 10 throughout the day. It's about to power down in a second, in fact. 18 degrees indoors. Okay, see, now that's real nice. That's looking real cozy in there. And I'm glad we got it done before the winter set in. What are we waiting for here? Five bricks. Okay, 25 left. So yeah, I guess we need to finish the end of this. And then maybe over here, just out of curiosity, I don't know if it's still growing time, but we could try this. Let's go farm. Just to test it, let's go skin bark. Uh, like so. And see if they can if they can get through that. If not, and then we'll have our answer. How much wood do we have? 22 wood left. Let's not use our brick for now. Let's go with a wooden pole fence across here. There we are. So we need 46 wood to kind of finish this area. And then I feel like this is somewhat impassable. And then over here, we just need to do a little something. Let's go defense. Let's go another fence uh, wall in here somewhere. We can even just try straight across and see what happens. There we are. Let's see if that stops their advance. And... Uh, and at least makes them decide to go all the way around to our wide open area here, just begging to be attacked. <laughs> it's looking really good in here. I really like how this all turned out. I think we have the fabrics that we can start setting this up. No, apparently we don't. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, turn those back off because I wanna make sure we can keep any fabrics we have for the future here. We have some skin bark, so I could make veggie leather chairs, I think. Why don't we do that? Let's cancel both of these and make some veggie leather chairs for this area. So they have a nice, uh, I think it'll just, wait, will it default to, uh, synthetics? Oh, it needs a leather, I guess. It doesn't let me do, I could do synthetics, I guess. Do I have any leather though? Don't I have some leather? I've got 29 hides, so that'll eventually become leather. So I can at least get one leather chair done. Uh, where are those hides? Are they drying somewhere? No, I want to dry them and turn them into leather. So let's get that done and let's get a chair there. I don't think we have the cloth. Maybe uh, average growth, growth rate zero. Yeah, no, we're done for the winter. So any fabric we have now, which is that skin bark, that's all we have left uh, for the future. But I believe, folks, I believe this is our first buttermelon pie, our first meal being cooked on our electric stove. And that to me, honestly, just feels like progress. Toxic ash might be falling down on Camp Ulfenbone. Another 17 flying insects. Man, it has been the episode of flying insects today are about to attack, but I just, I feel, and I don't want to flex too early because we know the next episode may contain nothing but death, but I feel just a little bit more prepared for this winter. Love that we finally got this building built. Love that we got on top of some of our resource chains here. Um, did even a couple of expeditions. I want to keep doing that for our advantages. Now, where are these guys attacking from? Right over here. So I think we could, yeah, we'd probably want to pause and start uh, cleaning up this group, but that'll wait till the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one and found it to be some uh, truly solid content. Wish me luck as we head into our nasty next winter, but I feel like we're kind of ready. Um, last thing I want to do, though, is... I would like to put up an Ulfen statue here. I don't really want to go and wreck all those bushes. But maybe I can put it here in honor of the heroism of brave, brave Squeams who attempted his best right there. I think that's a good spot looking out at... Or no, I can't, he wants to probably look... He doesn't want to look at where he died. I think he wants to look towards his family or maybe towards his favorite little trees. There, that's where we're going to put it. So uh, that is going to be dedicated to Squeams there, who died in and around this area this year. He did his best, but ultimately he succumbed into this uh, very tough land to live. Now, wish us luck for the next episode, and we'll see you there.